All right. Hello, everyone. Today is Monday, and it is the second day of my new live stream piano lesson series. So I started this series yesterday, and it was um, Sunday. It was a little impromptu. I'm looking for a way to engage people with some interesting things to do while we have some time on our hands alone at home. So I thought this would be a great way to bring people together. We can practice piano together. We can learn some new things together. And uh, yeah, so here we are today at our second piano video lessons live stream. And today's topic is piano technique. So we're going to be talking today about the best technique for using when playing piano. Um, we're going to approach playing piano from a beginner perspective, doing some beginner piano technical exercises. I'm going to talk about five finger exercises. I'm going to talk about piano posture. I'm also going to talk about major scales. So these are some things that we can dig into together. Hopefully uh, you can join me for the whole stream. If not, that's okay. It's going to replay on YouTube. And just for those of you who don't know me, my name is Lisa and I am the piano teacher here at Piano Video Lessons on YouTube. I also have a website, pianovideolessons.com, and I have a whole playlist, a whole series of free video lessons here on YouTube that follow my curriculum, which I have created for adult piano learners called Piano Video Lessons Year One. It is six units of free video lessons that you can watch and learn to play piano from scratch. All the videos are free. If you want the PDFs, you can purchase those to go along with your learning, but there's no registration fees. You don't have to give your credit card number to get started. So you can look for me there on YouTube. And I'm just going to have a quick look. I see some people have said hello on YouTube. So I have uh, Jay Smith saying hello. Hello, Jay. Uh, we've got Neeraj Vinvedi, I don't know how if I said that right, um, but hello from India, hello from Canada, nice to see you. I have someone named Horace Little and I'm saying hello to you. Philip Jones, hi, great to see you, nice to see you too, Philip. And uh, Horace Jones says, very good professional teacher. Well, I appreciate the uh, support and the w kind words. Uh, we've got Petra 1000, nice to see you too. And we've also got Haytham Baha. Half the fun of this is trying to me to pronounce these names that I've never seen before. Hi to you. Um, we've got hi to Terry Hannon. And one more here. We've got uh, Blessy Bumanagari. Hmm, maybe that's it. I don't know. And I think I missed one. Came in quickly. Marley Suan. And one more. <laughs> Eric Hunt, okay, ethic, ethic hunt. Oh, it's an ethic hunt. All right, well, another one. Everybody's popping in at once here. Jaya, we Jaya. All right, so as you can see, I'm able to pop your comments into the uh, bottom of this live stream, which is super awesome. I'm using StreamYard for my um, for my streaming service and it has all kinds of great things. If you post your comments in the chat, I can scroll through chat and I can post them up and bring them on screen. So that's pretty awesome. Um, now, again, I'm Lisa and we're going to be doing some piano practicing together today. So one of the first things that I want to talk about when it comes to practicing the piano is how you touch the keys. So it's super important that your hand feels relaxed when you play. If you're an adult learner and you're going to be learning to play piano um, for the first time, sometimes it's difficult to manage to not have tension in your fingers. So oftentimes people will hold their hands stiffly and then try to play piano with a very um, deliberate touch. So the first thing that you want to do when beginning to play is you just want to loosen up the, the mechanism that you're playing with. You want to sit with good posture. Imagine that there's a balloon holding your, oops, holding your head up so that your posture is good and straight and that everything is hanging from, uh, from your spine. You want your shoulders to be relaxed. You want your torso to be flexible. You want to be able to move around when you're playing. So then we're going to turn down toward the piano and we want to make sure that we have our bench high enough. So if you notice right now my elbows are out to the side and this is um, a helpful posture when playing piano especially when moving to the left and to the right. Um, and so if I'm sitting too low something will happen here where I'm going to lose this downward angle that's created from my wrist. So because I'm perched high enough on my bench it means that I've got a comfortable torso and when I bring my elbows out just a tiny bit my wrist and elbow are um, pretty much, well, let's see, 
the angle is a bit, the elbow is slightly higher than the wrist, and then the wrist leads to this sort of gentle cascade down to my curved fingers. And let's turn ourselves now to think about fingers. So if you look here, my hands are upside down and I'm just like relaxing them out toward you. And you see that my hands, my fingers are curved. This is the actual position that you want to have when you touch the keys. You want your hands to be relaxed. If you just relax your hands down by your sides and just don't even think about them for a moment and then bring them up, you'll see that your fingers like to be curved. They don't like to be straight. This takes muscle power and they don't like to be tense because this is a clenched fist obviously. We are not going to play very much piano this way. But if you if you open your hands straight, this is this is not a helpful posture. We tend to straighten our fingers quite a bit when we play, when we type on our uh, on our keyboards. So what you do want to do is find that relaxed hand position. So we've done a lot of things. Next you want to see where are you playing. So make sure you're far enough away from your piano keys. So when you look down, your feet should both be on the floor. Don't be sitting on your feet or crossing your legs. Put your feet on the floor and your knees should be underneath the white keys. So if you look down, if you imagine that you could see straight through, you had x-ray vision, you could see straight through the white keys, your knees should be underneath those keys. Not under the black keys, just under the front half of the keys where the white keys are. So make sure that you're sitting back far enough. If you're too close, your elbows are going to be locked in, you're not going to have a lot of room to move. But if you're back further, you have all of this flexibility to reach the lowest key with your right hand or reach the highest key with your left left hand without having to get your body in the way. So we're sitting comfortably, we're high enough up, we're making sure our posture is good, our feet are on the floor, our hands are relaxed and we're making sure that our elbows are slightly higher than our wrists and our wrists are in a neutral position um, that leads to, um, neutral would be like this if, if I was down there, neutral just sort of leads to this gentle cascade. You want to avoid bringing your wrist down like this. This is a bad wrist position. So you want to avoid this and that also curves your fingers up too much. So just leveling out your wrist so that your fingers can fall from the, from the from the bridge of your hand and then down. So we're going to be playing the piano using the squishy pads on the ends of our fingers here. There's little balls of squish on the end of each finger. That's where you're going to be touching the keys with those soft pads. Your thumb is going to be playing on the side. So just beside the fingernail, your thumb is going to press down on the side edge and all of your other fingers are going to be playing on their squishy pads. So Many times adults who are learning to play piano on their own struggle with making sure they have good posture and good playing technique. And that's where it does come in handy to have a teacher who's checking on you. So if you want to join, um, if you're a brand new beginner and you want to join my online class, I do run live online classes. So we have something like this where I teach directly to the group. Um, the, the beginner class is the year one class and that starts next Sunday. You can find the information on my website. Um, and also I also run a virtual piano studio where it, you're not following the curriculum along with us, but I'm I'm there to check in with you. You can post videos and questions and I'll give you personalized help as you uh, go along your piano journey. So there's that option too. But it's difficult sometimes to make sure that you're checking all those things. But if you just go through the checklist that I gave you just now, which is kind of long, <laughs> you should be okay. First of all, make sure your bench is high enough. Make sure your knees are underneath only the white keys. Make sure you're sitting up nice and tall. Make sure that you're having a gentle slope down from your elbow to your wrist and that you're playing on your curved, relaxed fingers. So if you just go through that little checklist every time, that will be a good start. Now I do see a few more comments have come through. I'm just going to double check and see who's all been commenting in here. Um, I see we've got uh, the Spotless King. Hi John, nice to see you. And I've also got Jim staying back. Hello Jim, nice to see you. Um, I've got uh, Jaya. We Jaya. Hmm. And for starter, left hand is more difficult. Yes, if you're right handed, probably you're going to find that your left hand is a little more difficult to coordinate. So some things you can do to help with that is you can work the left hand by itself, but also a really good thing to do to help is to play both hands at the same time, which gives your left hand a buddy. 
so that they're when they're playing together the left hand can mimic what the right hand is doing so those are a couple of things you can do and also the third thing is to try just not to be too too hard on your left hand just just let your left hand know that it's okay that it has a little catching up to do and relax and know that it will happen so that's my advice about that. Um, I also see uh, Patreon 1000 has a comment here. You're awesome. I've learned so, so, so much from your courses. I already did seven of them. Thank you for giving me the possibility to mention this today. Oh, well, thank you very much for sharing it. And um, I have currently got nine units of the uh, the progressive curriculum available as free videos on YouTube. And there's also a couple of sideline uh, units like the note speller for piano and the um, note reading crash course. If you're brand new to music and you don't know how to read music at all, you need the note reading crash course. Um, but I'm glad to hear that you've been working through those and that's awesome. I also have uh, Nicola Klee. Uh, dear Lisa, great to hear from you. Great to hear from you too. Um, Papaya, hey there. Hey there to you too. Okay, this name, I'm gonna go for it. <laughs> this is half the entertainment, right? Um, I'm gonna say it's Penuganda Ganesh Kumar. Hmm, hello to you. And uh, we've got someone thanking me. Ab oh my. Ab oh, yeah, oh, Ab Hishek. Sevastava. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome for the lessons. <laughs> and Jaya with Jaya is saying thanks a lot. All right. So let's continue on. We've talked about posture and how to get set up for playing. And now let's do a little bit of, of warm ups. Um, oh, but there's one more question that's quite relevant. So let's pop this one in. This is from Adam. Hi, Adam. Nice to see you. Um, Adam says, I've been wondering if it's better to have a bench. I use a stool. So the most important thing is that you're comfortable and that it's adjustable. So once you're sitting, you only need to be in the one spot and it's relative to you. So each person has a unique playing setup. So I have a bench, but I teach a lot of students here in my studio. So the bench is adjustable. I can bring it up and down depending on the height of my student. So benches are good that way because it does allow you to, well, the adjustable benches allow you to elevate or lower the bench. And a wider bench is helpful because it allows you to play duets with other people. You can sit on the bench together. So th those two, those are two reasons why benches are better than stools. But if it's just you playing and your stool is elevated adequately and you're comfortable then your stool is fine so that's the answer to bench versus stool uh, we've got hello ma'am from uh, Thamer Kamal hello to you too all right so after we've talked now about setting up let's talk about some exercises that we can do to get started so I'm gonna flip my camera angle around as you've want to my lessons before this will be the familiar angle that you're used to seeing when I teach and here we have it all right so it looks like we're a little crooked I'll straighten this out I was teaching a student earlier and I think I bumped it when I was done all right so when we play piano uh, touching the keys with our curved fingers, we want to make sure that we're using some sort of good pressure on the keys. I'm just going to move something one quick over here so I don't lose my spot on the comments. Um, yeah, so you can see I'm using curved fingers that I just told you about and I'm not flattening them down. I'm keeping them curved. And so one thing that you need to do is think about how you press into the keys. So it's different than typing because the piano key has a very large depth that it can go down. So when you press a piano key, you want to think about falling to the bottom of the key. So you're holding the weight of your hand into that squishy finger um, pad that I was just talking about. So instead of like playing each note separately with finger action, we're actually going to press into the weight. You can do that on a tabletop, like you're walking. Just move the weight from one finger to the next finger, um, transferring the weight between fingers. So as you transfer the weight from this finger, you move it to the next finger and then we press into the key. So as we press these different keys, it's more about moving the weight from finger to finger than it is about physically um, pressing a new finger. 
So something that you could do to get started if you're brand new is just get used to playing some keys. White keys are the best to start with because you don't have to worry about falling off. But why not just take a single finger. Uh, this is finger number two. Um, so this is one, two, three, four, and five. So if we just start with finger number two, we're just going to play a key with a curved finger and lift off. Play and lift off. So I'm dropping onto the key and lifting off. Drop and lift. Drop and lift. Now you can see that my wrist is acting in here in a very flexible way. I'm dropping. My wrist might go below and then lifting. Drop and lift. Drop and lift. So I do that on the piano. Drop and lift. I'm floating up drop and lift and we'll now change to a different finger so that was the easiest finger I was using finger two now I'm gonna to switch to use my middle finger and I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna drop in a curved position and lift drop and lift now we could try that starting on C to the left of two black keys here I'll play C drop lift D drop lift I'm just gonna move up one key at a time dropping with the weight of my hand and then holding it and lifting up by curving my wrist up toward the top and lift. I'm just going to turn my camera angle just a little bit down more so you can see more of my wrist action. Drop and lift. So I might go down a little bit low as I drop and then I lift. So you could practice that action of pushing off the keys while pushing your wrist up. This allows you to play with a flexible wrist which is so important because when we start to play between the fingers sometimes we lose the idea that this should be flexible. So it definitely should be flexible. Flexible wrists are important. Um, we don't want to have stiffness in our wrists, so we want to make sure everything is feeling very comfortable and very flowy. So now that we're sitting comfortably and we're working on this mechanism, these two fingers are going to be the easiest to work on. This next one, the fourth finger or the ring finger, is going to feel a little bit weak, but you can do the same exercise. Just dropping on keys and going up and down, dropping and lifting. It's like a float off. So you drop into the key. I'm going to imagine this is the piano key. You drop in, you float off. You drop in, you float off. So you're just going to catch the weight with the finger that you've selected. You're going to catch it, you're going to roll, and you're going to lift. Catch, roll, lift. So, I mean, this is not an action that we use every every note we play on the piano, but it definitely is um, a good way to relax the, the motion in your wrists and allow yourself to not be too stiff while you play. So, warming up with just some basic drop lifts. So if you're sitting at your piano, obviously, this would be a great thing for you to practice. So let's just go through this one time in case you are sitting at your piano. Choose a finger. I'm going to use finger number, uh, I'm going to use my thumb just because I haven't done that yet. So for those of you that are watching, you'll see that this works the same. I'm going to run from C up to C and back down. I'm going to count to four and then I'm going to start. One, two, three, four. C. Lift, drop, lift, drop, lift, F, lift, next note, lift, going up all the way, dropping and lifting, and I'm just kind of, it's like a flop down onto the key, flop and lift, flop, roll up, the posture pushes a bit forward toward the black keys. So there you have it, just a nice little single finger warm up. You can do the whole thing again with your left hand. And if your left hand is your weak hand, I recommend doing this exercise twice because it's definitely a great way to get coordinated and also relaxed at the same time. All right, I do see a few more comments have come in here, so I'm just going to have a quick peek and see what people are having to say, but I will switch the camera around so that I can speak to you directly instead of you looking at my hands while I talk. Um, so let's see here. Um, I have a question from Jaya. Please share Hannon Exercise Someday full version from part one till the end on your next video. Okay, so I do have some Hannon exercises. They're in unit, I'm going to say unit uh, I can't remember, I think it's unit four of uh, year one, and they're separated. So it's just right hand, just left hand, just going up, just going down. So that gives you a little bit of a break. Um, and I do not have an entire hand and exercise video. So thank you for the suggestion. And I also have here um, uh, Penu, Gon uh, Penu Gonda. Penuganda is asking for some techniques to remember scales and chords and I can call you Ganesh. Thank you. This is much better. Uh, Ganesh. 
All right, and then I have greetings from Poland and thanks for everything. Well, thanks for tuning in. All right, so I've got some requests here to talk about scales and chords and hand and exercises. So those are excellent uh, requests. Thank you. So now let's go on and let's assume that we have become comfortable playing single fingers one at a time. Um, the next thing that we can do is start to work on playing more than one finger at the same time. This can be a challenge for adults as well. The easiest two fingers to play at the same time are one and five. So thumb and fifth finger, one and five. Just try to play down on those pick notes that are five notes apart and play them at the same time. Again, drop and lift, fingers five and one, just those two keys at the same time. And you can go back down, dropping and lifting, using fingers one and five. So you, you plop on, you push forward and lift off. Plop, push forward, lift off. So you could practice playing those two fingers at the same time. You could also practice playing these two fingers at the same time. You don't have to listen to make sure they land together. Now they may not. You may find that one lands before the other. That's something that you can work on, making sure that they don't land one before the other, but that they land at the same time as each other. So you can pick different pairs of fingers to practice playing them landing at the same time. Now once you feel like you can comfortably play um, two, two different fingers at the same time, something else that you can do is start to work on pentascales. So pentascales uh, appear in unit four. So if you've been, if you're going to take or you've been working on the, the free videos on pianovideolessons.com, then when you get to unit four, lesson four, we have a whole series of finger gems here, which are pentascales. And so this is, like I said, unit four, lesson four, it's video number 52. And when we play these pentascales, let me just see if I can share my screen for a second. It's possible that I can. Chrome tab, share. Let's see if this is the right one. Yep, it is. Um, so you can see here that the C major pentascale is going to go up five notes and then down five notes. And then it's going to have individual notes that skip. So it goes from finger one to three to five to three and back to one. And then it plays three notes at the same time. So we haven't practiced this yet, but we will at the end of this pentascale. So this is just a, a larger version of what I'm about to show you that you can see here on the um, here on the, the the in the book. So uh, starting with the C major pentascale, relaxed posture, sitting straight and tall, knees straight underneath the white keys and we're going to think about that nice relaxed po um, position. You can do a couple of just basic um, wrist floats and landing. Make sure you've got curved fingers and this exercise is going to help you practice moving from one finger to the next up and then down and then alternating fingers. So here we go. We play finger one then finger two. I'm moving the weight three, moving it again, four, and then five. Back to four. You might notice my wrist is going up just a little bit each time I play a note. Now, this might not be easy for you. If it's not easy for you, then sometimes what happens is when you play a finger, other fingers will fly up in the air. That happens. We just relax them back down. We try to do a little zen moment, take a deep breath, and then go to the next finger. And if it happens again, so if I'm playing this finger and other fingers fly up, just tell them to go back down, relax while you're holding that finger, play the next one, and play the next one. Go as slowly as you need to until you feel comfortable, but I do recommend using your wrist to just push down into the keys and do a little lift of the wrist. That will help your fingers feel relaxed because when you're just pressing your fingers and keeping everything else stiff, then the fingers go, whoa, this is hard work and the other ones all stiffen up. But if you let your wrist be involved, you'll find that your fingers have less of this sort of, I don't know what you want to call it, stress action, but you're going to be just playing in and up and down. So a pentascale is a five note scale. Once you're comfortable, you can go up, and down and bottom, middle, top, middle, bottom, and then all three of those notes together. So at the end of the pentascale, we're playing a triad, which is a type of chord. And I'm just going to use these three fingers to show you that's how we finish playing C, E, and G all at the same time. That's a C major triad, a C major chord. So we can go up and down and then top, bottom, middle, top, 
back down and then all together. And we can do the same thing for the left hand. Building up slowly, training the fingers not to jump up in the air when it's not their turn. Moving the weight, pushing our wrist up to relax the fingers. Get this left hand going. And then, bottom, middle, top. And then all three together. So again, it's the same procedure. Then we can do both hands at the same time. Again, my wrist is involved. It's pushing up just tiny little wrist circles and then all together, six notes at once. So this is your C major pentascale. It's a finger gym from unit four of the piano video lessons that you can find on YouTube. And so we have C major, G major, F major, and D major. When you get into the bottom of these ones, we're starting to move into playing on black keys. So that is important. Um, I'm going to just pop on over and uh, answer a couple more questions here because obviously people are asking questions. They would like to have answers. Um, so I saw hello from Poland, and that was from Rudin 102. And then we have. Uh, Nicola is asking, when is the appropriate time to learn pedal? I think I know the basic theory, but is it possible to learn a piece? Thanks from Nicola. So Nicola, I am going to be covering um, how to learn a basic piano piece, and I believe that's tomorrow's live stream. So I will choose a piece that has some pedal in it, and we'll definitely go over that together. And then, um, all right. Then um, Alps is saying this reminds them of a song from a strange TV show. Okay, good to know. Um, so let's switch this back over to the uh, top down view and we'll talk about playing on black keys. So in this F major scale, we're going to be needing to play B flat. So this is the third one down. We have F, G, a and then instead of playing the B on the white key we have to slide in and we have to play the B flat so we're on a black key with finger four and then up to finger five and then down all right so we have thumb two three black key five black key down down down. And so you'll notice that I have slid my hand in further so that my fourth finger is able to play this black key without having to twist my hand over. So all I did was slide in and make sure that when I pressed my four that I'm here, I'm just moving out of the way so you can see, every other finger is in the position it needs to be. My thumb has slid halfway into the key and I'm coming back down. All right, so if I was out here, it would not be an F major pentascale. And if I slide in, we can just go on down the notes like this. So the same thing happens for the left hand. Uh, my finger two is gonna have to play a black key, so I'm gonna slide in so that it can move over to this black key without any trouble. You can play the piano keys anywhere on the key. We just generally like to play them in the white zone. So we do need to move into the black zone just a little bit. So we would have five to four to three. Now I'm over that black key already. And this is something that becomes automatic over time. When you're playing the piano, you might be playing something in the white zone. And then you need to play an F major. You just automatically slide in just a little bit. Then you might do D major and you just slide in a little bit. So it's easy to get used to this once you know that the trick is just to slide your whole hand in a little bit further so that you're over those black keys without having trouble. So this is just basically talking about playing some pentascale finger gems and these are found in unit four. And unit four is obviously quite a distance away from unit eight. If you do the numbers, it's four units away. Um, unit eight is part of what I consider to be year two. And in year two, we, we start to work on Royal Conservatory grade one material. And we use the, um, we use the technical requirements that are included in that series. So in that series, we're working on playing uh, full major scales. Sorry, I just hit my microphone. I'm trying to avoid doing that. And 
when we play two octave scales, it requires that we have to tuck our fingers under to reach more notes. So I'm just going to share a screen here and hopefully choose the right one again. It's a bit of a it's a bit of a gamble which one I end up with. Is this the right one? Because they have the same title. Yes, this is the right one. Okay, so if you look at this here, you can see we have the C major scale, which uses 15 notes up and then back down. The G major scale, 15 notes up and then back down. F major up and down, 15 notes. Um, the C major is all on white keys. The G major has the F sharp in both octaves and the F major has the B flat in both octaves and you can see it's written out here for right hand. So I'm going to be demonstrating those and I'll just stop sharing my screen here again but you can see that they that's exactly the same thing that I have on the top of this page from the unit 8 material. So when it comes to playing these scales We're going to be playing, um, obviously we don't have 15 fingers, so we have to do some kind of maneuver in order to get to the next note. So this is when we start to do thumb under movements. So before you try to play that on the piano, it's helpful to turn your hand over and think about how your thumb can be opposable and move underneath your hand. So if you move your thumb under and you touch the, um, the where your fifth finger comes to meet your hand, that is further than the reach that you ever need to do when doing these maneuvers. So just reaching under there and feeling relaxed with your thumb is a good way to warm this up. And then we can do that on the piano as well. So we can just tuck our thumb under and slide it across the white keys. We don't have to touch our hand. We can just literally slide the thumb underneath so that it's touching the white keys. And then we can try to play the, the note F with our thumb. So we'll play one, two, three and as we're playing this third finger we're going to slide behind and play F with our thumb. It's just peeking out back underneath there. Whew. But notice when I did this my wrist didn't really do anything crazy. It's just still where I started. You can see me tucking under and I didn't need to do this. I often see students bringing their whole arm over to get their thumb there. So they'll start and they'll do this little twist and then they'll play their thumb. So I'd like you to avoid doing that. Just bring your thumb under and tuck it. And then the rest of your hand will just find a new position here after the thumb, putting a finger on each white key. So again, this is something that you can benefit from live instruction from a teacher. If you find that it's uh, challenging to get coordinated and comfortable, a live teacher can coach you on what you may be able to do a little more easily to get those actions going. So the same thing happens here to start the next octave. I need to bring my thumb under and you notice that my wrist moves just a little because this is a bigger reach but again it's not this kind of reach. I'm not coming all the way over here. I'm just rotating a slight bit because that is how far I have to go and if I rotate my thumb, my wrist just a tiny bit but still keeping everything fairly straight then I'm in position to come over again. So let's do that again. One, two, three tuck under to F, all the way to finger 4, tuck under to C, and then up to E, tuck under to F, and we're going to finish with our 5 up here on C. Coming back down, it's a little easier. On the way down, we'll play till our thumb, then we'll just roll over. So we're just rolling over the thumb and placing finger 3 on the next note, roll over the thumb and place your 4 on the next note, and finally roll over to finger 3. All right. So, same thing for the left hand, you're just going to play, I'll start nice and low here, play all your fingers, roll over to three, play your thumb, roll over to four, play your thumb, roll over to three, and coming back down, we're going to play our three, we're going to sneak our thumb under, play our four, sneak our thumb under, play our three, sneak our thumb under. But again, it's so important to maintain that relaxed posture, make sure you're sitting tall, make sure your wrist is still a nice high um, elevation, I should say level elevation. You don't want a high wrist, you just want a comfortable neutral wrist and a flexible hand. So these are my tips then for playing um, beginner technical requirements. I don't know if there's anything else that you might like to see demonstrated. Um, I wanted to aim this lesson to be mostly geared for beginners and 
um, I feel like a lot of beginners need a good base to get started from. So if you're not a beginner and you're looking for some tips on some things you could do with technique, then maybe you could pop some questions into the chat and uh, I can answer them there. Um, the best way to really get help is to either have a video chat with me or send me a video of your playing, which is possible through the virtual piano studio. If you go to pianovideolessons.com, you can get the links there to find out how to join me in the virtual studio. Um, or you can also participate in one of my online classes, which has live interaction with me as well. And we follow the curriculum together. So the two classes that are about to start, the first one starts next Sunday, and it's a beginner class that goes through units one to four. And the other class that's starting in about a week and a half or two weeks, two weeks from Sunday, uh, is the piano cording boot camp, which we go through a lot of how to play by chords using lead sheets and studying the chords from various keys. But again, both of those are live classes where you have live interaction with me and I can give you any help that you need as you're working through the material. Um, so I don't see any more questions popping up um, and then oh except there is one okay there is a there is a, a comment question so I'll bring this one in. Uh, Jay is saying can you please also share this video recording on YouTube for this time so we can repeat the amazing tips and also yes absolutely it's a live stream right now and uh, yesterday's live stream was the um, uh, how to read music, how to read piano notes, those, that one should be still on YouTube. You should be able to find it on my channel. And now also this one is being recorded live so that you've been able to, um, be here with me live and then you can, um, watch it back later. So good news is yes, indeed, you can continue to watch it. Um, I'm getting a hi from Bill. Hello, Bill from Liverpool, UK. Nice to hear from you today. And I have a question from, um, uh, I had this, Abhishek. And the question is, what exercises should be done to improve both hands coordination? Okay, so that's a great question. So coordinating both hands together is something that builds up over time. But the most important thing is to find the level that you're at and don't try to jump too hard or too far into higher levels of coordination. So I'm just going to switch my camera back around again so that you can see my hands. And one of the first things that I do recommend to, to do is to work on those pentascales that we looked at, which were in the unit four, and it was just the five notes at a time. I, I guess I'll pull this binder back over to show you. I don't think I need to, but uh, what the heck. I have it right here. You might as well have a look. So. Um, what we have is, there we go. Nope, that's not it. Uh oh. Mm, page before. There we go. Um, I have. So this pentascale, it's, I call it a finger gym, is a very good way to practice just getting started, coordinating both hands together. And so being able to play both hands at the same time and having the notes landing together, that's the first step. Um, you can also put both of your thumbs on the same key and go using this. This is an easier step. So now I'm playing finger five and five, four and four, three and three, two and two, one and one. So if this is too tricky, playing the same letter names with different fingers, I'd recommend putting both of your fingers on C and playing the same numbers on different letters so this gets you used to playing uh, in the same time, each hand at the same time as each other. Um, so that's one thing you can do. There are so many exercises. We do work on this in the year one uh, series, mostly in unit one, just getting used to doing some coordinations. Um, actually, no, hands together starts in unit two. So um, b basically, I'm going to say um, it, it, it's important to be relaxed when you're working playing with both hands at the same time and if you find that it's hard to do the thing you're doing back it up and do something simpler and really think about what you're doing also slowing down is a big thing often we try to play too quickly and we don't have enough time to physically process what we're thinking about so playing more slowly and stopping after each thing that you try so that you can assess how the last thing went. Like I'm, I'm saying the next thing you try after the, each note, stop and just relax, go to the next note. Give yourself lots of time to mentally prepare for what you're physically going to do. And then you can start to gradually increase the tempo that you're working at. 
for those. So that was a good question. Um, I don't see any more questions. But I will be back tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be doing, I think, tomorrow's topic. I have to double check. It's on my, if you look at the playlist on my channel, you'll definitely know the topic. But I'm pretty sure tomorrow's topic is getting how to learn a brand new piece of music. And I think I'll choose a piece that uses pedal since I've had a request to talk about using the pedal. Um, so yeah uh, tomorrow i'll be back and i'm always on youtube you can always watch my free video series there the year one uh, complete piano lessons or you can join me in a live class either in my year one beginner class which is units one to four or in my courting boot camp which is unit five or in my virtual studio which is a place you can just get specific tips to get yourself going on things that you're actually working on outside of the um uh, the classes so whatever stage of the curriculum you're working on yourself I will um, be able to give you some personal coaching so four ways you can meet with me one is free on YouTube one is in my beginner class which starts next Sunday one is in my boot camp which starts in two weeks and the other one is in my virtual studio which doesn't require you to be in any specific point in the curriculum where you can get personalized help so I will see you guys tomorrow and thank you so much for joining me and uh, have a great day now go practice piano <laughs> bye bye <laughs>